ok. So, we are going to take up module 1 atomic and molecular structure lecture 5. Till now we have studied the 4 lectures that is up to metallic bonding and once we have studied the metallic bonding now let us look for that can there be or is there any kind of an imperfection in the metallic structure and if there is an imperfection in the metallic structure then what kind of an effect does it lead to. So, I am your teacher Dr. Manisha Shukla from BBD ITM Lucknow. So, we are going to study imperfections in solids and since our syllabus does not have all the imperfections. So, we are going to study the specific imperfections which are there as per us syllabus in the module. So, the content of this lecture would be will be crystal imperfections, point defects, Schottky and Frankel defects, metal excess defect, metal deficiency defect and impurity defect. So, before we begin are defects present in the solids, do they lead to some kind of a discrepancy in the solid or are they an advantage to a solid. In fact, there is always some kind of a crystalline defect in a naturally occurring material. Such defects are responsible for the existence of many of the important properties of metals such as electrical and mechanical properties like electrical conductivity etcetera. Just in the previous lecture we studied semiconductors and the extrinsic type. When we talked of doping the p type or the n type that was nothing but a beautiful example of imperfection in a solid. In fact, in fact we are very fond of wearing gems, I am also wearing one. Have we ever bothered that what gives color to these gems and why do these gems become so expensive? This is again due to some kind of an imperfection in the basic crystal lattice of the metal. So, therefore, what I really want to tell you is that naturally occurring materials have imperfections in them most of the time and this imperfection is a boon to the metal, is a boon to the crystal because because of these imperfections crystals show specific kind of properties that are used as engineering properties in engineering materials. So, now let us know that how many type of crystal imperfections are you going to are we going to talk of discuss. The crystal imperfections are broadly divided into two classes that is electronic imperfections and the atomic imperfections. In the case of electronic imperfections of course, it deals mainly with the electrons that can be n type or p type if the electrons are in excess it is n type and if the electrons are a little less then it is p type. Then atomic imperfections. So, we had already taken up n type and p type semiconductors in the previous lecture we need not discuss it over here at all. Atomic imperfections are the ones which we are going to take up in this particular lecture and we are going to discuss it in detail. The atomic imperfections when we talk of that means atoms in the crystal lattice are in an imperfect order. Broadly divided into 4 classes point defect, line defect, plane defect and volume defect. As the word suggests point defect means defect present at a specific point at a specific lattice site ok. Line defect that means a row of atoms is under defect, plane defect that means the whole two dimensional body a surface or a plane is defected. Volume defect is a three dimensional defect where the complete volume is defected. Since as per our syllabus we will be focusing mainly on the point defect which is also called the zero order defect. 
The line defect is called the first order defect, the plane defect is called the second order defect and of course, the volume defect is three dimensional or the third order. So, the point defect we can further subdivide into three classes. What are the three classes? Stoichiometric defect, non-stoichiometric defect and impurity defect. Okay? So, it is divided into three classes. Stoichiometric defect are further Frankel and Schottky defect. Non-stoichiometric defects are metal excess and metal deficiency defect. Line defect is divided into two segments as edge defect or the screw dislocation. The plane defect is divided into four classes grain boundary, stacking fault, tilt boundary and twin boundary. And the volume defect or the 3D defect is either inclusions into it in the whole volume or the voids in the whole volume. So, let us move on to the point defect which is in our syllabus. What is point defect? So, they are generally due to deviation from the regular arrangement around a lattice point in a regular crystal structure. They are of three types the stoichiometric, non stoichiometric and impurity defect. So, what are stoichiometric defect? What is stoichiometry and how do we define it? So, the compounds in which the number of anions and cations are exactly in the same ratio as represented by the chemical formula are called stoichiometric compounds. So, after the defect if this particular concept the ratio is maintained then this sort of defect will be known as stoichiometric defect. So, therefore, these defects they it does not disturb the ratio of cation and anion with respect to the chemical formula. So, those crystal compounds in which the defect is present, but the stoichiometry is maintained that is known as stoichiometric defect. And what is stoichiometry as we said? Stoichiometry is something in which the ratio of cation and anion after the defect remains the same as that of the chemical formula of the molecule or the crystal. Okay? So, under stoichiometric defect Frankel and Schottky defect are very important from exam point of view also. Normally, they may be asked as a independent question or in different in difference form. So, I have tried to put it up in difference form so that it is convenient for you to understand it and take it up for the exam as well. So, what is Schottky defect? If in an ionic crystal of the type A plus and B minus, okay, let us say Na plus and Cl minus, equal number of cation and anion are missing, okay, are missing in it, are missing in it, okay, then it is called Schottky defect. For example, NaCl, KCl, AgCl, etc. Now, you can see over here, so the sodium, this is cation vacancy, cation vacancy and this is anion vacancy. Now, what is Frankel defect? In case of Frankel defect, one of the ion moves out of the lattice place and is occupied at the interstitial space within that crystal. So, you know the electrical neutrality is still maintained, but for example, like over here see the cation has moved away and it is occupied at the interstitial cation. Okay? So, the electrical neutrality is maintained, it has not gone out of the solid at all, but from its original place it has created a cation vacancy and it has occupied the interstitial space. So, if in an ionic crystal one of the ion is missing from its lattice site causing a vacancy 
and it is occupied at the interstitial site maintaining electrical neutrality as well as stoichiometry. For example, AgCl and zinc sulphide. Now, let us look at the differences important from exam point of view also. Therefore, we must look at these differences very carefully and try to memorize them as much as possible. Okay. So, in case of Schottky defect, high coordination number compounds show this kind of a defect. For Frankel defect, low coordination number compounds show this kind of a defect. Now, in case of okay, uh, short key defect, since both cation and anion are missing, so the size of cation and anion really does not make a difference. So, there is a small difference in the size of cation and anion, it is immaterial. In case of Frankel defect, since one of the ion loses its original site, gets occupied at the interstitial space. So, if it is big, it will not be able to get adjusted over there. So, it has to be small in size. So, large difference in the size of cation and anion. So, if cation is small, normally cations are small. So, the cation will be missing from its site, it will be occupied at the interstitial space. Then of course, like in case of Frankel defect, compounds having highly polarized cations and easily polarizable anions result in this kind of a defect but in case of short key defect no such requirement is there. Now, when we consider the density that is very important. Now, in case of short key defect cations are also missing, anions are also missing. So, therefore, the mass of the compound will be reduced though the volume remains the same. So, therefore, the density automatically decreases because density is mass upon volume. So, in case of Frankel defect the density of the solid remains the same because none of the ions are lost. It is present at a different position within that particular structure. Now, the next difference is though it is not much of a difference, but you can consider it as a difference presence of too many voids lower the lattice energy and hence the stability of the molecule. If there are too many cations anions missing naturally the stability of the crystal lattice will be affected completely. Okay. Now, the stability is affected in case of Frankel defect also, but the reason is different. Now, what happens in case of what happens in case of uh, Frankel defect is that closeness of like charges like you can see over here all the cations present together. So, they will disturb the of course, the lattice energy. So, the closeness of like charges tends to increase dielectric constant of the crystal disturbing the lattice energy. And the sixth point under Frankel and Schottky is nearly the same. The crystal conducts electricity to a small extent by ionic vacancies, of course, because ionic vacancies are present in both the cases. So, in case of Schottky defect, cation and anion are missing, so the vacancies are there. Now, in case of Frankel defect, electricity is conducted to a small extent again due to ionic vacancies. So, this is what you have to remember differences between Frankel and Schottky are important. What is Schottky defect? What is Frankel defect is also important. Okay. Now, let us move further under point defects another defect is metal excess defect and metal deficiency after that. For metal excess defect as the name suggests that the metal is in extra it is excess. So, it can occur in two ways the first way is by anion vacancy. So, if the structure has of course, these are non stoichiometric defect the metal excess and the metal deficiency they are non stoichiometric defects fine. So, therefore, what are non stoichiometric defects? The non stoichiometric defects are the ones as we had seen earlier. So, non stoichiometric defects are the ones in which the stoichiometry is not maintained. What does that mean? That means, the number of cations and anions are not the same as the chemical formula. So, the first one is of course, metal excess defect by anion vacancies. Anion vacancies. 
So, what happens is one of the anion is missing and in place of the anion electrons are present in, in order to maintain electrical neutrality. So, in this defect a negative ion is missing from its lattice site leaving behind a hole which is occupied by an electron and maintain the electrical neutrality. Now, let us have a look at this particular place. Now, therefore, the metal ions become extra and the N ions become less you can count them and to maintain electrical neutrality the N ion is occupied by an electron and therefore, so the site which contains the electrons are trapped in the N ion vacancies. So, they and these sites are known as F centers, Fourier centers and they are the ones which are responsible for giving colors to the crystal. Okay. So, under non stoichiometric defect we have metal excess, metal deficiency defect and the first one that is metal excess we have consider it there are two types of metal excess one is due to anion vacancy and the other is okay, by presence of an extra cation in this interstitial site. So, have a look we have an extra cation over here. So, how do we maintain the electrical neutrality for it? There will be an electron somewhere. So, you can see an electron over here to compensate for the extra cation. So, the metal excess defect may also be caused by extra cation which occupy the interstitial site. Okay. The electrical neutrality is maintained by an electron present in another interstitial site. Here is the extra electron present over here. Okay. Now, this defect is found in the crystals which show Frankel defect. So, what was happening in the Frankel defect? Iron was occupied at the interstitial site. So, quite like that. So, when zinc is heated it loses oxygen and turns yellow. The excess zinc plus ions are trapped in the vacant interstitial sites and the electrons are trapped into the neighboring interstitial site. So, it is an example of by presence of extra cation in the interstitial site. Okay. The crystals with this type of defect act as a semiconductor as they contain some free electrons. Okay. So, this is something quite important. Now, metal deficiency defect, this is non stoichiometric defect again. So, we have metal deficiency over here you can see, but then how do we compensate for the electrical neutrality? So, there will be an extra charge at some other metal. So, the non stoichiometric compounds may have deficiency due to absence of metal ion from its lattice site like over here. The charge is balanced by adjacent ion having an excess positive charge like what I have shown over here. Okay. Thus, this type of defect is shown by elements of transition metals. So, this is quite an important point to be noted that met in case of metal deficiency defect. Okay. So, in case of metal deficiency defect the cation is missing and once the cation is missing the neutrality has to be maintained. So, therefore, because the cation is missing the metal ion is missing it will be a metal deficiency defect all right. But then in order to maintain electrical neutrality something has to be done. So, that electrical particular electrical neutrality can be maintained by losing one more electron or an extra electron from some other metal ion within that particular lattice within that crystal lattice. Okay. So, transition metals show variable valencies you know that they are capable of showing variable valencies. So, transition metals are the ones which are very popular with metal deficiency defect. Okay. So, this is how we explain the metal deficiency defect. Now, I will move a little backwards to a see, see up to here we were talking of metal excess, they were metal in excess. right? So, when the metal is in excess naturally it has to be compensated the electrical neutrality has to be compensated by addition of an extra electron. 
by adding an extra electron to it, what will we do? We will compensate for the electrical neutrality. All right. So, let us move on and have a look at the impurity defect, the last kind of defect. The impurity defect like in semiconductors we have seen doping is done, doping is done that means addition of an impurity. So, this defect arises when a foreign atom is present in the lattice in place of the host atom or the vacant interstitial site. The foreign atom means an atom other than the crystal, the atoms found in that particular crystal. So, this kind of a defect is known as impurity defect. <clears throat> as we have seen in case of semiconductors as I said, there also trivalent doping is nothing but a foreign atom into it, pentavalent doping is nothing but a foreign atom into it. So, that is a beautiful example of impurity defect. So, in the former case we get substitutional solids, the formation of the former depends on the electronic structure okay, of the impurity, while the latter depends on the size of the impurity. So, the former one means whichever atom is present into it. Okay. Now, if an extra atom is substituted into it, the substitution will take place only with that respect to that atom which is similar to the crystal structure, only that can be adjusted into it. Trivalent doping, pentavalent doping. So, like if you have the silicon structure, then trivalent doping aluminum can be added into it. So, that way the, the structural similarity means size should be adjustable over there and pentavalent for pentavalent doping also whatever is the doped material that should be quite similar to the ones into which it is doped. Okay? So, that is substitutional doping. So, in the case of substitutional solids, the electronic structure of the impurity should be quite similar and in case of a vacant something added to the vacant interstitial site, the size okay, it will depend on the size. Why? There the structure should be similar, here the size is also important. Why? Because the size should be small, only then can it adjust at the interstitial site. So, these things which are quite important and now I will take up, I will take up a bit of line defect and a bit of plane defect. Now, for line defect, see in case of a line defect, what happens is that edge dislocation and screw dislocation. When we talk of edge dislocation and we talk of screw dislocation, so in case of screw dislocation, the dislocation travels something like this. Okay. Now, in case of edge dislocation, see your it is continuing like this and now have a look this is the defected site. Okay? Something like this, this is edge dislocation. Okay? Now, if we have a look at the plane defects, the grain boundary, now the whole solid is there like this, suppose the whole structure, a whole surface is defected somewhere this is grain boundary. Okay? Now, when we say stacking fault, this is grain boundary number 1. When we say stacking fault, now stacking fault means we have A, B, C, we have A, B, C and somewhere we have let us say B, C, A. Now, the stacking one over the other, the stacking one over the other has been defected. So, this is known as stacking fault. When we talk of tilt boundary, what does that mean? The tilt boundary. Okay? So, I will explain you the tilt boundary number 3, what does that mean? It is also called lineage boundary. It is also called lineage boundary. So, what happens in case of a tilt boundary? 
C a tilted plane like this may be found. This is known as tilt boundary. So, when we talk of twin boundary number 4, I will take up number 4 somewhere over here, number 4 twin boundary what does that mean? Twin boundary means we have two surfaces and their boundaries are twinning this is known as twin boundary twin boundary this is twinning this is known as twin boundary. Now, when we talk of the imperfections with respect to 3D defect, this is also known as two dimensional defect, this is also called surface defect. Now, the volume defect or this is also known as 3D defect. 3 dimensional defect. Inclusion means a complete volume an extra volume is added into the crystal and a void means some particular volume is missing from the crystal structure that is known as a void. So, therefore, though we can study them in detail, but since our syllabus is more confined to point defect and therefore, we lay more emphasis on to the point defect. Okay. But now, I am explaining them to you one by one the volume defect which has inclusions and voids in it fine. So, these are the various types of defects we are going to talk of in our respective syllabus. So, as I said what is more important what is more important is to know whether defects are important or not. The answer is yes, they are important because they result in large number of mechanical properties, the diffusion properties, the conductivity, the thermal properties of the material and the electrical properties. And since we said that our syllabus has only point effect in it, so we laid more emphasis on the point effect. Point effect actually means defect at a specific lattice point. It is also known as zero order defect, it is also known as zero order defect, zero order defect. Okay. As we said stoichiometric, non-stoichiometric or impurity, stoichiometric compounds are those in which the stoichiometry is maintained even after defect that means the ratio of cation and anion is the same as that of the chemical formula of the material after the defect also. Non stoichiometric compounds are those compounds in which the defect is after the defect the stoichiometry is not maintained. What do we mean by stoichiometry is not maintained? If you have metal excess or you have metal deficiency. So, if metal excess is there naturally the cations become more and therefore, the ratio of cation and anion is not the same as the chemical formula of the molecule. So, it will be non stoichiometric defect. Now, we said that metal excess defect can be by anion vacancy if anion is missing the metal becomes excess or by of course, excess cation itself. So, if excess cation is there then to maintain electrical neutrality extra electron will have to be entered into the solid structure. Okay. And then we talked of under the non stoichiometric itself the metal deficiency defect. Metal deficiency means the metal ion is missing. Now, if the metal ion is missing then the electron becomes extra that electron has to be taken out from another another metal ion. Okay. And then finally, we talked of the impurity defect. The impurity defect means some foreign atom is either substituted or is present at the interstitial site. This is what we had talked about and discussed. So, children this was my lecture regarding imperfections in solids as per your syllabus. So, 
in your syllabus again I say that what is important is to know Frankel defect, Schottky defect majorly, but metal excess and metal deficiency also and a bit of impurity defect also questions are asked based on this. Okay. So, this is your teacher Dr. Manisha Shukla, hope you had a happy learning and we will be seeing each other on the next turn for the next lecture. Thank you.